Before us sits many, many Sonics. And we're going to break down pretty much everything. Or I'll, I'll at least try to. From Sonic from the comics. The comic version. The pre-Genesis Wave version. Alright, so let's get straight into it. Okay, so first off, here we have Sonic's head. Now, I've done a couple of... I've done a other video where... Uh, show the shape of his uh, face and kind of we did the muzzle in this video but the same rule applies so we got the head here that circle put in those lines so you can kind of understand uh, where his eyes and muzzle should go now what the artist has done is they have with the spikes the spikes have a very particular look so even though it's like like that what really he's doing is using these kind of shapes for the spikes and then each other spike kind of curves back curves back like that so in its crudest form it looks like that so the spikes are actually kind of shaped like that in a way so instead of just making your sonic if sonic's spikes were like this that's that's not what we're looking for we're looking for If that makes sense. It's kind of almost like a definitive point on each of the spikes. So that's very important. Also, the way his spikes are drawn here is he has other spikes um, coming off the edge here. So like, they're all attached. The spikes all, uh, like the end spikes touch the muzzle. And the rest of the spikes are almost... Like, if the line continued, they would run into parts of the head. So, you could almost say that, um, like, when drawing Sonic, you could, from the this base circle here, start the uh, spikes. And then, what the artist has done here is they've just, they haven't, like, put this, put that line all the way to the circle. They kind of got rid of it, but you can still connect it. So that's a good rule to have. So when you're drawing Sonic Spikes in a picture that you're drawing, I'd recommend probably starting the spike lines from that face circle, and then maybe erasing them later, so, you know, like like it has been done here. Also, Sonic Spikes facing forward, um, they're not the usual, you know? They're more star-like in their appearance. You know, so that equals that <laughs> right there. Okay, so <laughs> that's important to note as well. So in this picture right next to him, uh, this Sonic, because the hand is covering um, this side of his face, I'm going to assume that the spikes would be like here or something like that. But this is still important to note because you can draw Sonic spikes as if his face was like that. And his spikes are just coming out the side. Like it doesn't... There's not a hard and fast rule where every time he's facing forwards, he needs to have the star shape. Okay? That's not a hard and fast rule. In fact, when you do it like this, where it's coming off the face circle, it makes it seem like he's going so fast that these spikes are kind of wrapped around. Like the this these side spikes are kind of wrapped around his face, like so. There, if if you drew them through his head, it would look like that, and it makes it look like he's going really fast, like like Sanic the Hedgehog fast. Like I'm not even joking how fast he would be going. Okay, so that's also important. To know. That's another technique to to understand. Uh, okay, so. Now with this, so those are both facing forward pictures. This one is him sort of three uh, three quarters on the side, kind of like this, but not fully to the side like this. So his nose would be here if it was on the side, but it's kind of like here. Okay. So his spikes, uh, you can see, uh, that same shape, less, a little less defined as here like here they were really defined but use this one as an example this is the perfect way to understand how his spikes work 
do not use this one as an example. This is more subtle. And this is why people think... This is why people think when you draw Sonic, you can just draw his spikes like, like that. And that's totally fine. And wrong. Tell your friend to go home because they're wrong. Okay? The only, the only way to draw his spikes are using these points here. Okay? That's just, that's a hard and fast rule. Okay? That's practically science. Okay. So, that's also important to notice. So, since it's on a three-quarter turn, you know, those other five spikes are going to be like this. So, behind his head. This the, the red is behind his head. Obviously, you can't see that. So, um, it just draws, he just draws them from the side here. Hello, my pen just changed color. How interesting. Okay. <laughs> now... Ah, uh, yes. Here's another picture of, of old Sonic. Uh, so, doing that star rule again. I'm just really emphasizing this for you guys. So, see how now, in this particular picture, the spi his back spikes, like the bottom spikes, are behind his head. They're kind of like this, almost. Whereas, in the other one we were looking at, uh, they're kind of further away. Kind of in mid-air they kind of they kind of flying up upwards but uh, oh. uh, they're kind of flying upwards they kind of got some lift if that makes sense because he's in mid-air the this is a dynamic looking picture because Everyone's kind of in midair doing something, and same with Sonic. His, he's like in midair. It's like a s still shot of him just floating there. So his spikes are kind of lifting. They're not, they're not like behind him like this. And this picture here, when he's resting, it is the spikes are kind of sunken down, or they're. That gravity has taken their t its toll on them, so they're behind him, which is which is an interesting, which is a good thing to note. So you need to understand how the spikes work with gravity and things like that to make your pictures look even cooler. Now this is another picture of Sonic spikes. By the way, I'm going to be going through his spikes, then doing everything else. This is going to be a very long video, so get ready. But you, you like hearing my voice, right? So this one is him. He's moving like this and then stops abruptly and so what the artist has done here is they've used that same that same like shape that we were just talking about it's almost a triangle okay sonic just a bunch of triangles <laughs> essentially he's used those triangles to emphasize the momentum Okay, so it's like he's stopping so fast that the ends of his spikes are going <whistles> up like that, which is awesome. So that triangle rule for his spikes is going to be so important. It's pretty much the linchpin, baby, on how to draw Sonic properly. Okay, same with his ears, but we'll get to that later. His ears are... Actually, let's do it now. <laughs> let's just do it now. Okay, his ears are pretty much exactly the same as his spikes right here. Um, they're that same triangle shape, so, but on a very, on a harder surface. That doesn't make any sense. They're just, they're just more triangle. Uh, a good way I like to do it is start with the inside of the ear first. So this, these inside lines here start with them first when you draw them so like i would draw i would do that and that and then i would draw the other line and when i draw the other line that's when i add the curve so if i was drawing his ears i would go like that that's a that's a really um embellished way of explaining that but that is the best way to do it so instead of drawing his ears like this which is just it's not what we want it's not what we want at all. We want it to look like more like this. This is a little extreme, 
but it you get it when you can see up against the ear like that so and then he's just added another little triangle in there so with this one actually I'll just so with this one he pretty much does the back line first the inside of the ear first and then adds those curves in using that using the same triangle rule and then to add depth to add perspective to add interest in the the ears here um, he's put the triangles closer to uh, one side of the ear so this triangle is closer to this side of the ear same on this side and further away on this side and what that does is um, this crazy little thing called detail and perspective and it makes this side of the ear appear like it's flipping over so it makes it makes it look like it was moving there so if 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 this triangle was in a different location so let's say I add in a different location so we got this we got this here and I put the ear like this it looks like his ears on backwards see it looks like his ears facing up this way so by putting the triangle like that you can tell that's the back of the ear same if I did it on this side let's say or I just did a normal thing like that it looks even though it looks normal um, his ear kind of looks flat and compared to the rest of the image looks fairly undetailed whereas now if you do a little triangle like that it looks a lot nicer a lot um, like it's a subtle detail it's not like a hey check out this ear it's very subtle and uh, that's what we want we want subtle details those are the best kind those are the hardest to figure out. Okay. The side of the face. Alright, so. Get that get that circle. If I can draw a circle properly. Get that. Um, get those lines in there. Now, it kind of ends straight away, but this is pretty much... I, do, I chose this photo for the muzzle. So the muzzle in this one... Instead of, in, in a previous video, I showed you that it goes, muzzles are pretty much um, built on this system here. You can pretty much break it down for any any of the Sonic characters. Uh, but in this, when it's side on, it's a little trickier. So what you need to understand is, essentially, this this part here when put on the side is going to be bigger than this side which will end up looking smaller and I don't really have a good way to explain that it's pretty much just like that that's how you would draw the muzzle I think it is allow it it's done like that because it allows for the mouth of the sonic character to look like to have enough room to be emotive you know, you'd be like, and then you can kind of add in those lines later. If it was small, and it was the other way around, um, you wouldn't be able to be as emotive. So let's say that this was thin, and this was giant. Well, actually, that just looks silly. So there's your reasoning. Okay, boom, crushed it. Okay, uh. So we got the nose here. Let's let's move on to the nose. The nose is <laughs> this sh the shape of the nose and the way the artist draws the nose is something I can't I haven't mastered yet. I haven't really mastered much, but the nose is really it's it's this shape, but it's not it's a subtler. So it's like this shape. You know, it's it's like this yeah actually this is my this is my final answer but that's still not even that close it's almost as if you have a light bulb you know, there's a little thing and it's got the but 
shrink this side and this side of the light bulb and then you've got more of a kind of balloon like when you get one of those little balloons that's like this and then when you blow it up it's like shh it's like that it's kind of like an in-between of that and the size of this oh I don't know what I'm talking about okay so let's uh, yeah so in this one so understanding how to draw the nose so what the artist does is he almost I, I there's no really fast hard and fast rule because in this picture here based on what I know I would draw the nose more like that like more straight ahead because it's facing in this direction you know it's coming out of the screen but then he just he just messes me up come on come on Yardley okay so you know just wing it just wing it man and like here I'd probably put the nose out here if I was drawing it but it's like it seems to just recede into him so look see but here instead of it being like that it's more up I guess because he's looking up but that's just something to consider the nose is almost doesn't really have a proper rule see here when he's facing forward it's just a, it's just a little circle like that it's just a little circle but everywhere else you know it's it just doesn't make a lick of sense as Daffy Duck would say yeah so just just understand the shape of the nose and apply it however you think it looks best because maybe it does look best like this anyways let's move on to the let's go down here let's look at the shoes all right the shoes are an interesting little feature here I quite like these old shoes I only ever draw them like this so let's first let's first break down this these little cloths here that are part of the shoe. So um, where's a simpler? So here you can see they're basically this circle inside of a circle. So it's like the cloth is this cylinder that's been squashed a little bit. That's pretty much what the cloth is, and then add these lines here. And when drawing the cloth, the cuffs, you want this little gap that I just that I just erased. You want that. Okay, trust me, you want it. It's vital. Now, when doing different perspectives, you might decide that you want the cloth to be a little more pronounced instead of it being you know up here you really you you have that gap be a little bigger if that makes sense and look you can do that that's totally fine it's it's up to you it's up to your discretion in this particular picture this is a very difficult perspective with the leg going like that so take notes kiddies because this is the apex okay this is where the the mice and the men get separated so you have the circle here this is the top of the cylinder and then you have the bottom of the cylinder here but now instead of it just being like this line like that you have to draw because of the perspective you have to draw a circle inside the top of the cylinder all right that always evaded me as a growing up and maybe you've never heard that so hopefully that helps you because now and then and, and then it's like inside is so dark you know inside here that the artist just cuts the leg off as it's going into the into the cuff right there so that's an interesting thing to remember and to note um, yeah so with that but so with the cylinder instead of drawing the you know it like a cylinder he's kind of imagined you got to imagine that there's a line coming around here okay because he doesn't put it in he stops it here and then 
to add that little to add that little this thing, this little slippity do right here, this bend. Instead of continuing the line like that, he folds it down like that. Showing that, oh, this is in fact the cuff and the bend. And then, as if he wasn't brilliant enough, instead of completing the cylinder, he brings the cylinder back out and around. So, if I could draw the cylinder next to this, the cuff, it would look like this. But look at the difference in detail. Okay, Go, getting rid of that line, adding this line here, and then adding bulges, you know, out the sides like that. So good. Okay, take lots of notes. That same rule applies with this, you know. Circle like that, circle like this, and then the little circle, the little cylinder. Okay, remember that. Now with this, it's the same thing. Same exact thing, except the perspective is different. So what I showed you before was probably the hardest perspective. This one's easy. You just got to add a little, a little line in there, like that, and then you know finish the the cylinder. And then just add details in. Alright, but you already know how that works. So that's good.